Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a great day today. Today I'm going to take a look at the next series of the Zofique Cycle that Clark Ashton Smith wrote in the 30s. Um, I have already looked at about three of the first three stories for you in previous reviews. So now what I want to do is take a look at the fourth story in the list. Now the fourth story is much more detailed when it comes to world building and world crafting. It's a full like 20 some pages in my larger collections. This story here we're going to be looking at is the Dark Eidolon. Now the Dark Eidolon is also the title of of this collection by the Penguin Classics and such. So if you're interested in collecting um, some of the Clark Ashton Smith's uh, works, um, this was a good place to start. Um, there are some other places that you could go to. Um, even though he only wrote for five years from 1930 to 1935, he turned out a huge volume of fiction. Um, he also wrote lots of poetry, plays, other things. He did sculpture and stuff. So he was involved in creative arts from multiple different ways um, and so forth. Um, and these, this also has a lot of his poetry. In fact, it has fewer than 20 of his short stories, but it has a lot of his poems, prose poems, and stuff like that in it. So again, what I want to do today <coughs> is take a look at the Dark Eidolon. Now the word Eidolon is from Greek mythology where it means, uh, basically it can mean either a paragon of, of something, like its perfect form, or it can mean like a ghost or a phantom. Um, so either of those would actually probably make sense and potentially both uh, for today's story. So today we'll take a look at the Dark Eidolon, which is one of my probably one of my top five stories from the Zothique cycle. Now, Zothique is set in the far, far future in, in Earth um, where um, it's near the end of the days. And as a result of that, um, uh, what's happening is, is that people just have turned to, towards more and more increasing evil um, and so forth. And this is probably one of the best examples of that as both of the characters that are in this story that are rivals are incredibly evil and decadent. Um, and so uh, you really kind of want both of them to win and neither one of them to win <laughs> at the same time. Uh, and particularly your protagonist who starts the thing is probably the one you would prefer to win if either one of them won, but you get the idea. Um, and then there's also going to be another female character in it too who's also very evil too, although she's playing uh, one of the main characters um, and so forth as his most popular co co um, concubine. So one of the things that you're kind of seeing here in this story in the, in the Dark Eidolon is how how much, how evil this world has truly become, um, and so forth, how decadent, how self-serving, and so forth. Um, demons are back, magic is back, and so forth. Now, Zafik is a cycle of stories by Clark Ashton Smith, who is a world builder. He has a number of stories that are set in a number of different places. His Zafik cycle will be the place he comes to the most during his five-year writing career. Now, he will actually write a bunch of stories that, that will conclude after about 10 stories or so, but then he'll go back in and, and go to it. Um, his stories, unlike others, are just set in the world. They don't have similar characters or settings or so forth. They're not all set in the same city uh, or in the same the same characters or on the same you know island or school of magic or something like that. They're all in different places. Although most of them are going to have a necromancer at some point in time in them. There's still a few short stories um, and so forth. So earlier today, I I read uh, five short stories from the Zothique cycle. It's very fast reading. Um, and what I'm actually going to do for you now is I'm actually going to review all five of them. Um, I'm going to hit stop at the end of each of them. I'm not going to publish them at the same time because I don't want you to have to have five separate short stories in a row from the same series of psych from the same series. I'm going to give you a chance to go back and read it if you wanted to do that. But um, I'm kind of excited about that. The, again, again, these are probably my favorite cycle of stories by Clark Ashton Smith. Now, Clark Ashton Smith is a writer for can have some purple prose at times. He has uh, read dictionaries, encyclopedias, and so forth. So his writing style is different. It'll take a little bit of a custom to getting to, but once you kind of get up and running, then you can kind of knock out a bunch of his stuff at once. Um, most of his um, paragraphs are going to have at least one word that is not commonly used in literature, so you're going to have to either look it up in a dictionary or just figure it out from context clues or move on. So he's going to use words like nescent um, and stuff that aren't normally used. So you need to make sure you understand, <laughs> understand that going in. But he's, he's a very strong, evocative writer who has some very creative ideas. So we're going to take a look at the fourth uh, story in the series, The Dark Eidolon. Um, and basically, The Dark Eidolon is going to open up. Your protagonist is going to be this person, um, and you're going to find out that he was a beggar boy in this city. Um, and as a beggar boy, he um, begged for some money from the rich prince of the city who, had, uh, who was riding a steed in through the area. And the rich prince, who was about his age um, at the time, rather than give him something, um, instead runs him down with his horse, um, and will, and which will um, cause him to be so badly wounded um, as a boy 
that he will uh, almost die. Um, he gets nobody's there to save him. Nobody comes and helps him out after the prince and his and his entourage leave, um, and so forth. He is scarred for life with it. Um, he flees the city at a young age. Flees to a nearby oasis, where he meets up with this master of uh, of necromantic arts and dark kind of demonological demonological arts too. And as a result, he will join this man as the as his apprentice down there at this sort of oasis out in the desert. Um, so he'll, he'll be there for a while. Ultimately, his master will die. Um, he will take over um, as one of the great sorcerers of the day. He's going to be one of the great necromancers. He's also has some demonology things going on, too. Um, he's allied with the same demon um, and so forth. Meanwhile, our prince is going to be taking over the city. He, he killed his dad by putting a, a poisonous snake in his bed. Uh, and so forth. So it was never traced back to him, but it was rumored that he actually killed him. And him and his, fav his favorite concubine have now taken over the city. They're both young, younger people and so forth um, and such. So now again, I won't give you too many spoilers, but basically what's going to end up happening um, is that uh, our protagonist sorcerer is not going to be the forgiving type. What he's going to do is he's going to teleport his mansion of, of his, his, necro his necromantic mansion into the city, into the courtyards uh, where the palace is, uh, and so forth. Um, there's his undead creatures and the monsters that he controls from, uh, you know, um, undead to monsters and so forth are going to be um, at his beck and call and are going to show that he is who he says he is. And he's going to have the little ruler back off, but then he's going to send some hauntings and so forth. What's going to happen about halfway through the story, you're going to find out um, that um, he has been told by the demon that he serves not to kill this person because this person, one, has done nothing harmful to him and two, actually serves the demon, although he doesn't realize it, by some of the actions that he's taking. He has furthering the demon's cause. Um, that's where I'm going to stop it, uh, let you re read the rest. But there's a lot of strong creatures in the series. Um, um, I do think that there's a number of sort of uh, creatures that we get in modern fiction um, from the sort of fantasy genre. For example, shadows as undead creatures are never called shadows as undead creatures, but you can clearly see them. Um, there are these shadowy creatures that are moving around his uh, during the day or moving around his, his house and so forth. Um, and and so forth, uh, and it seems very, very undeadish. Um, and his, some of his own did refer to as these shadow creatures. Also, you have um, probably nightmares, uh, where, where the kind of a nightmare concept of this sort of an evil dark horse concept comes from, because you're seeing those as these servants of these demons. Uh, you're also seeing um, genies in this too. Evil, there are evil genies and such. So there's a lot of these different sort of creatures from mythology. You'll see Lamias, um, and lots of other these sorts of demonic creatures, mythological creatures, and so forth. Are going to be serving at the beck and call of our protagonist, and I call them protagonists loosely because both these people are incredibly evil people. They're mean, they're assassins, they're nasty, and so forth. So anyway, um, and so you feel free to read it. All three of these characters, um, and the demon itself, um, if four if you count the demon, um, are all strong, strongly evil characters that are all out for themselves um, and seek to kill or or to control the situation so that they get the most power from. So they're all going to be in a sort of a clash of cultures and such. So again, I've stopped about halfway through. And I'll let you kind of finish the story. Um, and there's, that's where I'll put the pause on this. So that's the story of The Dark Eidolon. Have you read it? Have you read some Clark Ashton Smith? I'd love to talk with you about it further. If you want to engage with the last half of the plot, I'm happy to do that with you as well. On the other hand, if you instead you want to do something um, like talk about, uh, so if you disagree with my, my ideas, uh, you don't think that Clark Ashton Smith is as great of a writer, you may think his prose is a little too purplish at times, that's fine. I don't mind. I'm happy to engage you on that. Um, I do want to point out, though, that the female character in this is very much in the sort of second archetype of female characters from this era. The first is the sort of um, uh, strong, um, good female character who's virginal in nature. Uh, and then the second is kind of the the one who is loose uh, sexually, who controls her own sexuality, sees evil, uh, right? And so you, you can't control your sexuality and be sexually open to others and not be evil in in most of these archetypes, and she's of the second type. Now there are some counter examples of Valeria, for example, from Rhett Nails by Robert E. Jordan, said in the Conan mythology is a woman who's openly open sexually, will sleep with others, and she's a very strong character too. She's a strong, um, well, she can hold her own with Conan and then some others. So she's a very strong warrior ass. So there are some counter examples from this era, but as a general rule, there are these two strong archetypes, and she's in the second archetype, the only, the only main, main female character. Just going in with eyes wide open 
so on and forth. Um, but again, these characters are there. Feel free to uh, be, feel free to hit me up, and I'm happy to talk with you more in the comments below or about just Clark Ashton Smith in general. Um, if you read this, or I'm saying, <laughs> if you read this too, yeah. If you watch this video, hey, I want to appreciate that you take some time out of your day. It's very humbling that you folks spend some time with me. Everybody's got busy days and busy lives. So the fact that you spent some of that with me, uh, I really do appreciate that. So thanks. If you watch this video, hey, there's no reason not to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed it because there's a lot more of these sort of reviews of these sort of classics to follow like this 30s series of cycle of short stories by Clark Ashton Smith, one of the guys who I think is a kind of a forgotten sort of writer. So thanks again for your time.